Okay, part two of being in the flow. It, it just popped up another thing that uh, tried to explain um, what remains, how, how your mind is different, how things are, you know, after realization, what shifts, what shifts. It's like you're, you're always, there's a still center. It's like you've become an atom or a molecule, whatever you call it, the atom, and this stuff is swirling around it, but there's always that still center. So you're aware at the same time of being that still center, okay? But you have the peripheral view of the things that are circling around it, okay? So you're, you're never, you know, before, before realization, before the mind stills and you have that still center, you're not aware of a still center. All you're feeling is like being on the hamster wheel. You're on the outside of the hamster wheel running, running. The mind's running on this, the mind's running on that. You're in this soap opera, you're in that soap opera. Well, what happens, so you're first, you're going like this. The mind is spinning. In realization, you go from the outside of here and you drop into the center. You've now become the axle of the wheel. Instead of being on the outside of the wheel, you're on the axle of the wheel. Okay, so you can feel those things that are close to the center of that. You're aware of these things that are going around, but you're no longer like hanging on for dear life. Okay. <laughs> I think it's the best way to describe it, okay? There's always that still point, that divine is, which is paramount in one's consciousness at that point. The mind is still the, the active part of the revolving thing, okay? That still, it gives way to that stillness. Um... So that's your living reality. That's what remains. It's a, the living reality. So you're in a different space. If I, if I stop doing action, doing this, doing that, and I stop and I'm just sitting still for a few minutes, that bliss comes up. There's a bliss that, that one can access, this quiet, this still, this Ever, poten ever arising potential, um, that pregnant void, the potentiality, this bliss of uh, just being, just being, without having any occluding factors over it, okay? You don't have the occlusions of mind anymore, these... Uh, you know, dark glasses like that people are looking through. You know, you've got this ideation, that ideation, okay, clouding the view. It's like the glasses have been taken off and there's clarity, okay. Um, that's what Buddha meant when he said, I've woken up, okay. You know what the dream was, okay. And even, you know, when all that falls away, you can't even really access the old standing dream, the, the things that one was involved with before, the pain or whatever it was that one was involved with. And you lose that, um, like if people say, oh, you should write your book, you should write a book about your life story, I can't put things in any kind of a chronological order any longer. Okay. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't, okay. Uh, so that's another thing that's different. It's really hard to sit and try to analyze it, to put it in words of duality so somebody that's not in that the, the, the mind of Advaita. It's hard to explain to people that are in minds of division that are constantly 
turning on things. They're being run by their past stuff or things they're trying to uh, accomplish or whatever, things that are driving them. It's hard to uh, for people to imagine what it's like to be in that quiet. Okay. For some people, they run away from the quiet. They, they can't take the quiet. They're doing everything they can to mask it because they don't want to see what is there. Okay. So in the midst of the path, you have to stop and you have to look. And first, you cognize all the mental spin. Okay. No getting away from it. That's why it's the value to go to these, uh, uh, what's the name of that? Um, they go and you just sit for a number of days. Uh, it, oh, Goenka runs it, but he's so, unfortunately, he doesn't know anything about Kundalini. And then a n number of people have gone there had Kundalini awakenings being there. And he, he poo-poos it because he doesn't understand it, doesn't know what it is. But part of the path is just sitting there and confronting the mind, seeing that it comes up and it latches onto this and latches onto that, um, when really the two things are not, you know, one thing doesn't have something to do with another. Okay, then you want to layer it on. So big part of the path is just sitting and watching, confronting looking deeper it's like if you look really deep you'll see that anger or you'll see that these huge emotions are adrenaline rushes okay so you learn not to put the spin on it you learn that it's just energy if you could take and see it's just energy and you're you are taking and um placing that energy on some sort of an ideation, okay? And that's what's giving it its flavor. You have that anger, and so the body feels this rush, and then you start, you know, uh, kind of combining the two of those. Um, but if you can see that it's just a rush of energy, you can back out of it very quickly. So anyway, that's just, it's part of the path. The main part of the path is observation. Being willing to sit through those strong emotions or the strong things and see if they're real or not real. See where the seed of those comes from. And then you confront it at a very deep level. And that starts kind of unlocking things. Okay. I hope I'm not confusing you more. Um, Yeah, and eventually when you get to, you know, the end point of that, everything breaks. It just crumbles. It falls apart. It just, <laughs> it doesn't have anything to hold it together any longer into this solidified uh, separateness of an ego frame, feeling that you are, you know, a body. You are a body. We're never a body. The body is a vehicle. Okay, we are consciousness. You're not the brain. You're not the mind spin. You're consciousness. Okay. But it takes a lot of years to find out that one is consciousness. Because first you have to walk through all these different scenarios to see what they are and what they're not. Okay. You can't just read a book and then try to intellectualize it and, and get there. You have to directly experience it. Okay. Um, and directly experience it. it means taking that time, being aware all the time of your awareness, being aware of awareness. Okay. Um, you eventually you start out and then you go into witness state witness state is when you can do your body's doing actions 
and the mind is doing whatever it's doing, but you have enough of a buffer zone that you can see what's taking place as it's taking place and you can comment on it. You'll see some of your actions. It's like, well, that's pretty stupid. Why am I doing that? That's <laughs> as it's happening. Meanwhile, the body's continuing to play out whatever it's playing out and you're commenting on it. It's almost feeling like schizophrenic for a while because there, there's a, like this split. You are in its observation place where you can see it and you've got enough of a buffer zone that you can uh, cognize what's happening as it's happening and can dissect it um, to get to the deeper levels of how it's happening, why it's happening, and um, the confusions it brings or whatever, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's part of the path. Okay. So again, hopefully this has helped and it hasn't confused the issue. Um, like I said, this is not going to happen in a year's time. This comes out of lifetimes of searching and lifetimes of dedicating, you know. You start out on the fringes, maybe, I don't, if you're Buddhist or Hindu or Christian and you're praying or you're doing mantras or you're doing, um, you know, whatever practice. And then things start getting deeper and deeper and deeper as you go, okay. And more doors open. And you start seeing with a little more clarity, you know, step by step. But you can't start here and jump to the end immediately. You, you have to do the steps, okay? Um, I have a real problem with those satsang sellers to say there's nowhere to get, there's, there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to get, you're already that. Well, if you were already that, and you knew you were already that, you wouldn't be in suffering. So yes, there is, you, you do have to do the path. But when everything breaks, then it appears like, it, you know, you know it was always here, okay? It was always here. But again, without doing the path, you're not gonna get there to know that, okay? It's one of those conundrums. It's again, one of those, you know, there are a lot of those types of things along the way, these conundrums. You know, that you can't get there. It's kind of like the Bible says, faith without works is dead. You don't get there by the works. But if you got, you say you've got faith and you're not doing the works, then you don't have the faith. It's that same kind of a conundrum. You can't earn your way to heaven, okay? But you're not going to get there just by faith and saying, well, I believe it, you know. Well, if you really believe it, then you're going to be acting. You're going to change your actions. <clears throat> So if you say, I've got faith, and you're still continuing to do these bad actions, you're a bad actor, you're doing bad actions, then your faith is dead. It's, it's, I don't give a rat's ass how much you say I'm saved by the blood of Christ or whatever it is you want to say. Or I'm going to the locus or whatever. Okay. Uh, wherever you're projecting, it, it, it's not going to happen. Okay. You can try to fool yourself, but again, and you're not going to get there, well, I've worked my way up here. Well, no. You know, that's why we say that, uh, you know, this happens by grace. Okay. It happens by grace. Um, it's not by your own bootstraps. I earned my way to realization. No, it, it's by grace. One has to, like I said in the end, absolutely surrender. When you come to that point of death, and it's even like the Bible says, you know, you have baptism. It's representing that death and the resurrection. Well, same thing in, in the, whichever path you pick, you will come to that point where you die and then you're resurrected. Okay, and it, it does feel like a death. Okay, you are staring death in the face and you surrender in that point. And that's a terrifying place to be. Okay. But it's over in, in an instant. 
but it's like a faith of uh, walking on the edge of the cliff, you know, the Grand Canyon and jumping off and, and having the faith and knowing that you're going <laughs> to, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> you're like, you come up here and you know you got to jump and you're going, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, because you go in and you don't know. That's why you're doing the path. You don't know. You want to know. So you have to go by faith. And you want to find out. Do you want truth more than you fear fear? Okay. You have to want truth more than you fear fear. Okay. It's another reason Christ said fear not. You know. There are a lot of very deep truths that Christ was telling, but people weren't getting it, okay? They weren't understanding what he was saying. That's why I have such a problem with the churches, uh, these preachers and ministers that take things out of context and they're not getting it. And then we have the good Christians, like, you know, the other day had the good Christian that came here, got their nose real out of joint, and they get nasty, and they get, well, where, where's your Christianity? Where is your good grace? Where is your, you know, yeah, right out the door very quickly, okay? So, um, so yeah, I'm going to leave this here. Uh, hopefully you've gotten something out of it. <laughs> Thanks for asking.